Hey everyone, welcome back to the live coverage of theCUBE here in New York City from Mongo Local, the beginning of a 20 plus city tour. Mongo.local is originating here in New York City. Packed house. Okay, Mongo Local, I'm here with the CEO, David Chiera, who's going to break down with me his vision and kind of what's happening in this next gen data platform they've built. Dave, great to see you, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, John. Loved your keynote here at the beginning of the show. Before we get into some specifics, Mongo is, you know, born in the crowd, developers, bottoms up, consensus is, that's where the developers are. You have the platform, document winning strategy, document database, variety of other tools. The format's changed for your show this year. You're going to do, originate here in New York and then do a multi-city tour. Take it to the streets. Yes, yes. So what, um, candidly, our business is so global, um, and we realized that while it's great to have one big flagship event and then have a bunch of satellite events, that we really need to take the show on the road. So we're going to be in 26, 26 cities between now and the end of the year. Places like Sydney and Sao Paulo and Milan and Frankfurt and Tel Aviv and London. And so we're going to go to where our customers are. Yeah. And uh, I think also, you know, people are a little tired of the Zoom world. So, you know, having in-person yeah. interactions, connections, rebuilding old networks yeah. is going to be great. Well, you're here at the Javis Center in New York City, and certainly it's packed house here. As many people as was last year were here, so yes. you certainly got the local crowd in New York, and people flew in for kind of the flagship inaugural beginning. Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, but we purposely, in some ways, um, we're actually scaling down New York because we're moving dollars from New York to some of the other cities because there's so many markets that we're in that we feel like we need to make a bigger, bigger presence on. I mean, obviously we're, pretty well known in New York, and New York is always going to be a very important place for us, yeah. but there's some you know, big markets we're going after, and we have a big opportunity in front of us. Taking to the streets, that's where the developers are. This conference, your keynote, specifically touched on some of the things that I had on my exclusive preview uh, with you, and that was the, this developer-led data platform. And it's a platform, it's not a point solution, Correct. or an analytic tool, or an analytical platform. So you have a world of platforms emerging very quickly, you guys are really the first to lean in on this developer, changing software industry, not something else. S explain the strategy behind the developer data platform, really focused on the coder. Yeah, so if you, if you step back and think about, you know, it's that old cliche, you know, software's eating every business, right? And who builds that software is developers. So everything we do starts and stops with developers, right, in terms of making their lives easy. And what I try to communicate in the keynote is that when you look at where developers spend their most time, it's working with data. In fact, you know, depending on the application that they're building, they could spend between 30 to 70% of the time just working with data. So if you want to make them incredibly productive and make a big impact, it's all about making it easy to work with data. So our whole raison d'etre is to be able to enable, to simplify working with data, which is started with yeah. a document database and now it's with the developer data platform. And I think the other thing too, I want to get your thoughts on it around the market share and some of the, the data market is, you know, you look at all the successful companies like AWS as one example, it's an easy one to jump out. I remember talking to Andy Jassy in the early days, they were very misunderstood. And he said to me one time, you know, you got to be misunderstood for a long time sometimes to kind of hang in there. You guys have been on a trajectory with Atlas and a platform it's different than some of the other players in the quote, database market. You guys have a 2% share in that database market that seems to be changing very quickly. I even predicted there's going to be winners and losers and new brands emerging, but yet no one really has got a dominant share. Amazon's number one by the quote, Gartner stat, but like, that's just databases. So like, how do you see the market? Because clearly you see something here that's a little bit different then chipping away at that 2%, oh, by the way, not a bad TAM either. It's still a huge market on the database side, right. but do you see something else going on here? Well, what, what we're, one, the, this market is so large, to your point, that you can have less than 2% share and be close to a $1.5 billion revenue company, right? So it tells you how big this market is. But it also tells you that we have a long you know, path for growth, right? We have a big road to grow. So we started with the database, and what our customers told us was like, we love your technology, it's so easy to use, it simplifies my life. I would love to, have to use MongoDB for other use cases. So we slowly added more and more capabilities so that as people think about building really sophisticated applications and now even AI-based applications, they will think about MongoDB first as a place to build those applications. And that's what we want developers to think about. 
And so when you look at our customer base, we have some of the largest companies in the world running their business in MongoDB, to cutting edge startups who you may have never heard of, who are just building their business to either create, transform, or disrupt I different with, industries. I talked with Chris Grews, who runs the marketplace for AWS earlier, and I said, hey, you know, the, the classic cloud model is land, adopt, expand. Your business model, from dorm room to boardroom, is almost the same motion. Get coding, grow, yes. and then you grow into this base. It seems like you have so many customers on the self-service side growing up into full-blown full blown enterprise-like capabilities. Is that a feature or, <laughs> or a bug? I mean, or, I mean, I mean, it's obviously a feature because you have a lot of headroom there. Yes. Talk about that dynamic. You're seeing more growth than is Atlas picking up that share. There, that growth's there. So, Talk about the power dynamic of landing, adopt, and where's the expansion come from? Yeah, again, it, it starts with developers. I mean, the workloads in general tend to start, new workloads tend to start, start small because the app has just been built, there's very little data, there's very few users, and over time that workload grows. But as you win more and more workloads, as that snowball effect happens, and all of a sudden, the business in that account, and so now we have you know, so many seven-figure and six-figure customers who are really running their business on MongoDB. But it didn't start as seven, yeah. six-figure customers, it started as four and five-figure customers, to your point. Sometimes some from self-serve, and over time, they've grown into that because they've slowly given us more and more business, and that's the way we operate. We want to build a long-term relationship with our customers. This is not a quick bang, do a yeah. big deal, and then walk away. We're building a long-term you know, relationship with our customers that we think is incredibly valuable for them, and as, as, as they grow and as they see value, we're the beneficiary of their growth. You know, one thing I want to get your thoughts on is your positioning, your position vis-a-vis -vis LLMs, foundational models, AI, developers. They're all trying to figure out what to develop on, then how to stand it up and run it. Right. You guys are a big leader in developers. You got the LLM and AI. What's that story here? So for us, um, <coughs> what we are doing is, when you think about AI, for us that's all about building more intelligent and smarter applications, right? And a key part of that is thinking about semantic search. How do I really understand and intuit the intent behind that query, which needs vectors, right? So vectors basically are a mathematical representation of all forms of data, so you can do things like nearest neighbor searches. And so by enabling vectors or vector searches, you enable developers to build these very interesting AI applications based on either LLMs from the public domain and, and being able to marry that with your own proprietary data. So the fact that we can offer vector search in our platform means that on one platform you have your source data, your metadata, your search indexes, and your vectors, which makes a, creates a very unified and compelling uh, experience for developers and it makes their life essentially so much more easy. What's the reaction from the investment community around your keynote, the platform play, what are they, what are they saying? Uh, they seem to be impressed. I think um, <coughs> as, as a, um, you know, a lot of the investors are quite impressed with our platform story. Obviously, as you know, we announced some strong earnings in Q1, um, but we don't get obsessed with where the stock is today or tomorrow. We're thinking about long-term where we're yeah. taking the business. And given that, you know, we're just focused, can keep our heads down. We know we, what we need, need to do. We listen to our customers carefully, build those capabilities, try and execute well in terms of going out and, and winning more business, and just do that over and over again. I mean, you got the platform now for multiple years, you got a trajectory. What are some of the learnings that you're seeing come out of the business from this multi-year platform journey? And what, what's your view right now as you talk to customers? What's, are we at an inflection point, more growth? What do you see happening right now with the platform? So I think there's definitely been an inflection point. When I joined MongoDB, which was almost nine years ago, you know, there's still some questions about what's the winning technology, is it MongoDB, is someone else? Well, nine years later, it's clear that we've won the modern database yeah. or data platform space. Now customers are much more comfortable trusting us to be able to do more. In fact, they're coming to us and saying, you know, enable full text search. They come to us, give us a time series solution. You know, they're coming to us and enable us to do in-app analytics, and now, stream processing yeah. and you know, vector search. So this is all driven by customer feedback uh, to us because we have 43,000 customers and so that gives us a lot of confidence and conviction about what we're doing because over time, the challenge for customers is that when they use a bunch of point tools, they get a ton of data sprawl, they get a very fragmented developer experience and so their architecture is both very costly and very complex and hard to manage and yeah. so, uh, um, and so given that, they're grabbing to a place where they say, I need to have much more elegant architecture that enables me to move fast, 
but it's much more cost effective and, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, easy for me to use. Talk about the, uh, the dynamic now when you have customers building in native. A lot of choices, you got streaming now announced today, the streaming solutions out there. I, I'm seeing this platform pattern emerging on the big players. You guys are out there at the top of the, top of the heap. Native services, platform, and integrations with other services. A lot more, I won't say rubbing up against other vendors and other platforms, but the integration stories are coming out. We heard about AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, and uh, um, 19 other clouds out there. There's like other clouds. So integration is well, <coughs> a huge part of it. What's native, what's not? How do you see that playing out for the customer? Well, again, um, we start from the point of view of the customer and then work backwards, right? So customers told us they want to expand in these areas, but we also recognize we need to be a good participant. You know, where, you know, um, uh, Amazon and Google are sponsoring the show and also sponsoring the world tour that we're going to do for the rest of this year. So they're great partners. Azure is also a good partner. And we're working with them, we're winning customers collectively. Um, but we know that we need to be a good partner. So, you know, different uh, technologies integrate with MongoDB. We work with BI tools. We work with uh, uh, you know, OLAP tools, um, <clears throat> et cetera. So um, um, on the streaming side, while we've introduced stream processing, we do work with the transport companies like Confluence, Red Panda, and many, many others who, are, who offer the yeah. transport capability to basically enable these event-driven applications. Yeah. And so we have to be able to work with these people. We try and build our services yeah. in a very composable way, an extensible way, so we can add more integrations when we yeah. find that they're, you know, customers are really demanding that. And so we take a very open approach to you how we build our here, product. It's packed house in New York City. You got an ecosystem. Yes. That's a platform, check. <laughs> Growth, platform. I mean, right now I think you're what, going to do close to two billion maybe this year? Uh, two point estimates are about 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> Upside over 1.5. You got an ecosystem checking in. Mark Porter was telling me, your CTO earlier, that the failover response time is less than in the milliseconds in the Atlas database on all clouds. So there's a trend where this whole distributed systems architecture is paying out dividends. Are you seeing that in the numbers? Are you seeing that in the uptake? Is that yet resonating with customers from an impact standpoint? Is it more of a revelation now? Or what are some of your thoughts on that? Because there's a lot of value in that ecosystem and that distributed global platform. Yeah, I mean, John, I would say that we're really excited about the future, but I'm so cautious. Like, the economy is not firing on all cylinders. But our, in Q1, we added more customers than we've had in the last two years. So it's nice to see yeah. us adding a lot of customers. A lot of other companies are struggling to add more customers to their portfolio. Um, uh, we're showing great operating leverage, so we continue to you know, grow our business, but also do it in a much more efficient and effective way. Um, but we're, and then we're also planting seeds for growth, right, with yeah. all the product announcements we made. So we're, we, we feel like we are building a very healthy long-term business, but doing it in a very disciplined manner. I've been saying on theCUBE now, and on our, our podcast with Dave every week, AI's hot all the time, but developers are setting the standards. There's no de facto standards bodies in this era. Go back to the old era when we were breaking into the business. You had IEEE, a lot of physical layer standards. Now you got hyperscalers out there. The developers are kind of playing that role of defining kind of what tools and open source projects will be getting pickup. So we're seeing the developers leading how, how to purchase or buying decisions or adoption decisions because they're coding in line to the application. The applications are in charge. The developers are driving that. You've kind of brought this up in the keynote and Love Your Developers is your campaign that you just released. Developers are setting the agenda. Yes. How do organizations and customers you talk to flip that script? Because the script has been flipped, but not maybe not in the companies yet. Well, our approach is to really think about how do we make developers uh, be able to do more um, and be more productive. Like if you just start and look at where the developers spend their time, look at how they work. You know, if you build tools that make their jobs easier, they're going to use your tools. If you build platforms that enable them to do a wide variety of, address a wide variety of use cases, they're going to use your platform. Yeah. Um, if you enable them to easily go to different deployment models, whether it's your own data center, the cloud, multi-cloud, mobile, edge, and embedded devices, and you can do it on one platform, they're going to use your platform. So the more you can make the developer's life easy, the more they're going to gravitate yeah. to you. But they're, 
but they're smart, they're, they're cynical, they don't like hypey marketing, so you really have to prove it in terms of yeah. building real product that adds real value, and that's, that's our goal. And developers do talk very frictionlessly on the internet, they can share their commentary, of course, exactly. you see that. Final question for you, as you look over your nine years at Mongo, you know, think us through your mind, like kind of how that journey progressed where you are now, because when you look at, it's the same game, building software, at a whole nother level, because the data game, AI, it's again, it's software. Right. Our silicon advances are still software. I would say there's really been three chapters to the MongoDB story. The first chapter when I got there was to really prove that MongoDB was not like, like, like a cool toy, but that people could really trust their crown jewels, their mission critical workloads on MongoDB. And it took time, we had to build tunable consistency models, transaction guarantees, enterprise grade management security, and then over time they started believing. Then the next chapter was like, okay, the cloud was very popular, the cloud redefined how applications were built and how they were managed. So we had to prove that we could build a cloud business. When we went public, cloud was in the single digits of percent of revenue, now it's almost two thirds of our revenue. And a lot of people were skeptical, they said, how can you partner and compete with the hyperscalers? And we showed if you build a great product, have strong product market fit and execute well, you can do that. And we, one of the other things we did that no one else did is we built a truly global distributed data platform that runs across all the major providers with one single elegant interface. So we made it very easy for developers to manage workloads and build applications no matter what cloud they were using. And now the third chapter is all about building out the platform. So we started with the database and saying, customers said, okay, I trust you to run these mission critical workloads, but I want you to do more. I've got all these cool new use cases, time series, you know, more sophisticated in-app analytics, yeah. um, uh, full text search. I want to be able to do that all in one platform. And based on feedback, also now do stream processing and build the next generation of AI applications. So that's the, the third chapter that we're on today. We were riffing earlier about data scalers. Hyperscalers was the cloud, you guys are the data scalers. And so I guess my final question to end the segment with you would be, what's your vision for the platform, next level, and generative AI's role in the future of scaling data for customers and making developers the, the driver of value extraction and insights that we've never seen before? What's the vision of the platform and your view of how generative AI is going to impact developers. Our vision is that MongoDB is the first choice for developers everywhere to build modern you know, applications. Those applications are now even more intelligent and more smart and AI enabled, and they're going to choose MongoDB to do that. Awesome. Dave, thanks for coming on theCUBE, and thanks for your time. I know you're super busy with customer visits and investors. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you for having me, John. Yeah, thank you. And congratulations on your continued business success. I think you could be 10 billion uh -huh. in revenue, but I know, you yeah, <laughs> got to keep the expectations down. Yeah, thank keep you those very earnings much. coming, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. MongoDB, data scaling for customers. This is what's happening here in theCUBE, bringing you all the data here live with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. We'll be right back with more coverage at MongoDB Local after this short break.